barbecue starter? I remember last time I couldn't find it. Barbecue lighter? I've never heard that term before. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to those who are watching from home joining us in worship this morning. Great to have you. Uh, I'm Lynn Dunlop, uh, and, and really appreciate being able to be here with you this morning on this gorgeous day, among these gorgeous days. Uh, as we proclaim Jesus Christ, the light of our world, let us take time to reflect with Diane's music. Bunch of liquid city. 
let us read responsively our call to worship. We believe in God, the creator and redeemer of all life. We believe in Jesus Christ, who is risen to new life. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who moves us to live in joyous ways. Let us rejoice with thankful hearts. Let us worship God. And let us stand as we're able to sing our opening hymn, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, the tomb has been opened and we dance into your future. We surround you with our praise. You reach out your hand and lead us into joy. You breathe peace into our souls so we may bring healing to a troubled world. You show us our hearts so we may give love to others. You show us our hands sending us to serve the needy. You show us your hope so we may live in your joy. Receive our praise through Christ our Lord, for in his love we know your deep love, your faithfulness, and your grace. Amen. And that uh, opening prayer is courtesy of Reverend Tom Schumann. I would now call on the choir to sing for us their anthem, uh, A Hill Called Mount Calvary. <laughs>
choir, that was uh, lovely. A and uh, I'm always amazed at your accompanist who not only plays but sings alto at the same time. <laughs> that was beautiful, thank you. I would now call on Joanne for our gospel reading this morning. Our scripture reading this morning is John chapter 20, chapter 19, verse 31. The risen Jesus meets his closest friends for the first time after they had all abandoned him in his hour of need. I'm reading from the new revised standard version updated edition. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Rejoice the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus and Thomas. But Thomas, who was the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when they saw Jesus. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have come to believe. The purpose of this book. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that were not written in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that though believing, you may have life in his name. This is uh, Easter 2, the second Sunday after Easter, and often noted as well as Holy Humor Sunday. So, if I may, uh, why do fish live in salt water? Uh, because pepper makes them sneeze. <laughs> they only get worse. Uh, what do you call a sleeping bull? A bulldozer? Uh, and finally, what did the judge say when the skunk walked in the courtroom? Odor in the court. Yeah. Yeah. The average four-year-old laughs 300 times a day, but the average 40-year-old only four. That's quite a change. Oh, I have one more. Uh, who, this is for the trustees, uh, who was the wisest financial investor in the Bible? Noah, who floated his stock while everyone else liquidated their assets. <laughs> uh, I like watching uh, one of the uh, Toronto TV news stations, and quite recently they did a week-long look at what they called Joy Snacks. Did anybody else see that? Um, it, uh, joy Snacks, 
learning to find joy in mundane experiences is a way to cultivate a more meaningful life. So, and when I uh, think of joy snacks, I automatically think of your sermon snacks. I, I think that's a really uh, unique and great way to raise some money for a great cause. Joy snacks is something that was uh, named first by a psychologist in the States, and it's, it's looking for ways to find joy purposefully. Uh, every day, and, and uh, we know that uh, moments of joy don't come from uh, money or accumulated goods, but rather they come from uh, relationships with other people, and uh, I always find, too, the joys that we find in nature. So it talks about the fact that one should figure out what triggers joy for you and then set aside time every day, it doesn't have to be a great length of time, uh, to uh, purposely focus on, on that. And one finds that joy can bring on gratitude and, and vice versa, gratitude can bring on joy. So for me, uh, uh, absolutely uh, walks in nature uh, I look forward to being able to get to the Trillium Woods on the way to Sweeburg uh, fairly soon. Uh, although, what I did learn last year was that many of the Trilliums have now disappeared. That, that's a place that has those unusual three colored uh, green, various colors of green Trillium, but I guess many of them have been choked out. Nevertheless, it's a lovely walk uh, through the woods. Uh, and the other uh, joy that I find almost every day, I would say, uh, is to open my iPad and to go to my photos, and I have about 2,000 photos of my great niece, great nephew, great great nieces. Uh, glad to show them to you anytime. Uh, and uh, I just call up a couple of those, you know, a little video, a couple little pictures, and, and, and I can just find, feel the blood pressure uh, going down Im immediately. Uh, I think children. Uh, are able to do that for us. So, um, just a thought about uh, thinking about where you find uh, your joy snacks every day. Let us uh, say together the, the prayer that Jesus first taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us remain seated to sing our next hymn, God Who Gives to Life Its Goodness.
cataract surgery and I just play on and off with the glasses uh, till I get new ones, sorry. Easter has been described as a springtime for the soul. All around us we see signs of life in the greening of the earth again, and new life is what we are given in Jesus Christ. Easter is a joyful time when we gathered with family and friends to celebrate around the dinner table in our homes. And as Christians, we gathered worldwide in our places of worship and online in our homes to rejoice and to say, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Today, we acknowledge the ancient practice of seeing the Sunday after Easter as a time to celebrate the great joke that God played on sin and death by raising Jesus from the dead. It is sometimes referred to as Bright Sunday or Holy Humor Sunday, an occasion for people to join in praise, laughter, and good humor in celebrating God's love for us. And so, a joke. A man was circling the block, searching for a parking spot. Finally, after the third time around, he prayed, God, if you help me find a parking spot, I will go to church every Sunday and tithe 10% of my income. Immediately, a spot opened up and the man prayed, never mind God, I found one. <laughs> As we move forward, it is time to ponder the Easter mystery. What does it mean that Christ is risen? What does resurrection mean? A minister was teaching a group of grade two students about the resurrection when one student asked, what did Jesus say right after he came out of the grave? It was a good theological question, but the minister explained that the gospels were not clear about what Jesus said exactly. Then the hand of one little girl shot up. I know what Jesus said, she insisted. And what was that, the minister asked. The girl threw her arms wide and explained, ta-da. <laughs> well, ta-da, God's curtain call. And as I think more about it, I realize that we are an integral part of that ta-da moment, that curtain call. We are called to be Christ's hands and feet and Christ's voice in this world. Our tendency on Easter Monday is to slip back into our routine, allowing ourselves to be weighed down by the burdens and conflict and loneliness and negativity that can grip us. We have only to turn on the news to become saturated with all that has gone wrong in the world on a particular day. But we are called to remember Jesus' words to the disciples, Shalom, peace be with you. He was giving the disciples and us the hope to carry on in the midst of despair, hope that because he lives, we too shall live. The opening sentence of Mark's gospel is, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It signals that Jesus' story is the beginning of the gospel. The good news continues with us as we learn to go on beyond Easter with Christ. But how do we go on beyond Christ, Easter with Christ? What does that mean to you? Bishop John Spong, somebody that my mother always loved reading, his books were all around the house, and, and finally I picked one up and, and fell in love with his theology as well. He said this, the miracle of Easter is not so much about the resurrection of Jesus as it is about our own resurrections. If the rumors about the empty tomb are to be believed, then Jesus has left the tomb. And if we are to follow Jesus, then we too shall have to leave our tombs. To follow Jesus, we will have to leave the old trappings behind like shabby grave clothes if we are to live in the light of Christ. The resurrection to which Easter calls us is our own. And resurrection requires that we prepare to find God where God is by opening ourselves to the world around us with our eyes and ears open wide to new life. This means that we must be prepared to be surprised by God in strange places, in ways we never thought we'd see, and through the words of those we never thought we'd hear." End of quote. 
A phrase that I, I listen to a lot of uh, podcasts, uh, I, I find that it's uh, great to be able to not have to look at them, but to close one's eyes and just listen to what is being said. Often they, they start out as political podcasts, but, but there's, off, there's so many uh, lessons about life within them. And a phrase that I recently heard is good trouble. Sounds, and this is the English teacher in me, sounds like an oxymoron, like giant shrimp or bittersweet or same difference. Good trouble was a term coined by civil rights icon John Lewis, who on March the 7th, 1965, led over 600 marchers across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, on the first of three attempts to march to Montgomery a day that became known as Bloody Sunday because they were beaten back by state troopers. He defined good trouble to mean standing up to authority for what you believe in, getting into the kind of trouble that you can be proud of. He said, do not get lost in a sea of despair, be hopeful, be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year, it is the struggle of a life. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, say something, do something. Never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. Today is Earth Sunday, preceding Saturday, April the 2nd, which is Earth Day. On March the 20th, the United Nations released its latest very sobering report, their seventh on climate change. The Secretary General of the United Nations, in response, called on every country to respond to the challenge. And he wrote this, Dear friends, humanity is on thin ice, and that ice is melting fast. The climate time bomb is ticking, but today's report is a how-to guide to defuse the climate time bomb. It is a survival guide for humanity. As it shows, the 1.5 degree limit is achievable but it will take a quantum leap in climate action. This report is a clarion call to massively fast-track climate efforts by every country and every sector on every time frame. In short, our world needs climate action on all fronts, everything, everywhere, all at once. We have never been better equipped to solve the climate challenge, but we must move into warp speed climate action now. We don't have a moment to lose. Thank you. End of letter. My first response whenever I hear climate change is to feel overwhelmed, helpless, and often without hope. But I recently listened to a podcast uh, on the bridge with Peter Mansbridge. He too was feeling overwhelmed, and he called a climate change expert to look for advice. Professor Catherine Hayhoe is a Canadian atmospheric scientist living in Texas who is one of North America's leading academics talking about climate change. She started by saying that we seem to be stuck in this mode, tapping the microphone saying, is anybody listening? We are, she says, experiencing psychological distance. We view climate change as a future issue about people who live over there, not here, not my issue. We have to talk about it now, here, to make it relevant to the people in our part of the world. We need to study climate change where we live. We need to talk about what has already happened where I live, what is something tangible with my family, my school, my church, that I can do to make a difference. She says, we've always had these events, but climate change is making them worse, floods, fires, etc. What have you noticed? What has changed? What is getting weirder? What is happening here and now? Talk about it, she says. What can we do as individuals is very important, but our individual choices aren't enough. Our society has changed with the end of slavery, with how women, women got the vote, with apartheid, with civil rights, those watershed moments never happened because the wealthy or influential people or CEOs woke up and decided that things had to be different. 
It was because very ordinary people like us did something very powerful. They painted a vision of a better future and they called for the action that would bring about that better future. This crisis calls for the conversation about what can we do collectively to demand change. Polls have shown that most people are worried about climate change, but most people are silent because they don't know what to do. She said, we need to have conversation about connecting our head to our heart and then our heart to our hands. What can we do as a neighborhood? Change has to happen at every level. Talk about it with someone else. If they're doing that thing, I can do that thing too. So I looked up, uh, watersheds are a very important part of climate change. And you folk right here are in a very unique spot of being right, I think, on the cut line of two watersheds. For those of you who live north uh, towards Ingersoll, you're in the Upper Thames River watershed. And for those of you living south towards Tilsonburg, uh, you're in the Long Point region watershed. Uh, part of that is the Big Otter Creek. Ontario's conservation authorities now issue reports on watershed conditions every five years. So there's a new report card that just came out, 2023. And one thing I noted about the Long Point region report is that there are 85 species at risk now in our area. 14 reptiles, 30 birds and insects, 14 fish, 23 plants, four mammals. And you can go online and, and look at those uh, 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 interesting, one of them is the uh, um, American weasel, which is actually a cousin of the weasel across the border. Uh, but one of the issues is that they can't find enough uh, other weasels to mate with now. Don't have passports, I think. <laughs> uh, the United Church of Canada has offered resources for having the conversation with others and working out some next steps. And this is what they have written. People in your community might be in different places about climate change, from acceptance and hope to denial, futility, and despair. Whether we are in denial about climate change and doubt that there is anything happening, or are aware of climate change and doubt that our actions and those of others can make a difference, both have the same outcome, the status quo, which is the Earth's continued destruction. Today, they wrote, we encourage you to help your community to personally experience climate change, to touch the wounds of creation, just as Thomas was invited to personally experience and witness Christ's wounds. We pray for a transformation, hope, and renewal of purpose, just as the wounded risen Christ encouraged the disciples to break free from the status quo and from fear and to continue Christ's ministry of healing all of creation, end of quote. I live in Woodstock now, uh, and I often find myself in my car waiting for the light to turn at what I think is the busiest intersection in Woodstock, and it's where the big box stores meet the restaurants, meet the fast food restaurants, meet the gas stations, meet the cars and trucks coming from the 401 and heading to the 401, but they also meet a church right at that very corner. And I like to read the message on that church's sign. It flips through several. But one of the messages is this, pause and find the blessings in today. And so that's what I like to do until I hear the honk of the car behind me. <laughs> but it is a reminder that we do need to pause. And one of the blessings that I name is the opportunity that we have to gather as a community of faith, in person and online from our homes, to share in our joys and our sorrows, to celebrate the awe and wonder of God's wondrous world, to acknowledge that life can be difficult, challenging, lonely, and sometimes overwhelming, but that our faith gives us this opportunity to talk and share and encourage and commiserate and support and challenge and empathize, to see what good trouble we can get into together. Brian McLaren talks about congregations as schools of love, 
places where we connect honestly with one another and where in that vulnerabil vulnerability we become more loving, more compassionate, more at ease in our own skin. We celebrate today that we are a resurrection people, called to go out and live in the way that Jesus lived and in the way that he taught. We are called to live courageously, knowing that Jesus did not fear what others might do to him. We are called to live in the midst of our sorrows with the faith that love will triumph over all things. We are called to go out with the hope that the resurrection represents, that the Spirit of God, through Christ, works in us to worship, to, to nourish hope among humanity. Let us go from here, ready to leap and dance the resurrection story, including all in our circles of love. Let us celebrate that Christ is risen, that he lives on in us, and that we are never alone. We live in God's wondrous world. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. The risen Christ gives his heartbroken disciples the gift of peace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. God is always finding ways to give to us, and our offering this morning is one way that we can return a portion of what we've received so that a world broken and in need will hear the good news of God's love. There is the opportunity to give uh, at the back of the sanctuary or through alternate ways. And let us remain seated to sing our offertory hymn. Twice. What can I do? pray. We praise you, O God, and give you thanks that you have given us such joy, such grace, and such hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Receive these gifts of thanksgiving and praise and use them for your glory and for the good of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. It is with great sadness that we announce this morning the passing of Margaret Bell. Our thoughts and our prayers are with all the family this morning. Uh, details are pending, but we do know that uh, visitation and memorial service will not be this week. So you'll, uh, if you can keep an eye on the announcements. I have lots of announcements to go through here, and if I miss any, please let me know. This Friday coming up, uh, Messy Church at 5.30. Uh, you have a board meeting this coming Tuesday evening. Uh, next Tuesday is Tampon Tuesday here, uh, 7.30 to 9. Uh, Lori Mindler is the speaker, and we have entertainment and light snacks. And the cost is just to bring a donation or a cash donation. So hope that you can make it uh, that night. I don't know what this means. R Lori wrote this last year. Arrival of spring means ants. <laughs> anyway, you'll know what that means? Okay. <laughs> you guys have ants ah. at the back. Oh, all gone now, Joanne? As long as we keep the food away. Got it. Oh, we hate doing that. Uh, gift cards uh, are uh, orders are now due for May the 7th. Uh, the shredding has been moved from 
this past, from April the 18th to April the 25th, and talk to Dawn if you want to get in on that. Ukulele lessons have already begun. And I have a special note here. If you would like to participate in a card shower for Carol Anderson's 80th birthday, you could send her a card and her birthday is May the 2nd, uh, 2023, May the 2nd. Are there, and the Blazing Fiddles have a concert April 22nd at Old St. Paul's Church in Woodstock. Lori is back from holidays this week. Are there additional announcements or birthdays or anniversaries? And now it's time for my great grandmother again. Ooh. Uh, April the 12th. Excellent. Thomas. Thomas. Very good. Uh, April the 12th. Congratulations, Carol. Thanks. Yeah. They're lovely to have around, aren't they? Yes. Any other announcements? I have this little announcement on the door. <laughs> oh. Can you read it for us? If you can't see it, it's two people on. Uh, I think that's this coming Tuesday, maybe. <laughs> 40% anyway. Thanks, Diane. Are there any additional announcements or cartoons? Then seeing none, let us pray. God of grace, God of love, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you make all things new. We thank you for the story of Thomas showing us that faith was never easy and that doubt never breaks your love for us. Long ago, you called your church to a love beyond all social and cultural differences and gave them the gift of your Holy Spirit to open their hearts and to live out your love. Give us that same spirit of openness that we too may discern new directions in our day for your dream to reconcile and heal all creation. For the love made known to us in Jesus Christ through his, this community, for this and all other blessings, we give you thanks and praise. For those who are grieving or suffering illness of body, mind, or spirit, for those who are lonely and in need of someone to share their time and friendship, may these and the troubles of all your people be soothed, blessed, and comforted by your holy presence. And now we bring before you in silence the names of those who are written especially on our hearts this morning. Deepen us, God. Deepen our trust, our hope, and our love. Deepen our vision of what we may be. May we take your love into every part of our lives. For so many blessings, we give you thanks through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand as we're able to sing uh, one of my favorite uh, to an old Irish tune. Uh, we shall go out with hope of resurrection.
Thanks to Carol this morning for dealing with the slides and being the greeter. Thanks to Joanne for coffee hour. Thanks to Richard for uh, working the computer. And Diane, thank you so much. It's always uh, such a pleasure uh, to hear your lovely touch on the piano. I, I'm only jealous. <laughs> As you go from here, may God, source of our hope, Fill you completely with joy and peace so that you overflow with hope. May God grant you a joyful heart. Let love be your guide. Go into the world to dance the resurrection story. Go in laughter, go in grace. Keep God in your heart and a smile on your face. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen. Amen.